Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. Today we're talking about batch processing HDR images through Photomatix Pro. You might be asking yourself, well, why do I need to do that? Well, if you're going to do an HDR time lapse, then you're going to need to batch process them because if you did it one by one, it would drive you insane. This seven second clip that I have loaded here that I shot a couple days ago is basically uh, 630 or over 630 images that were processed down to 213 uh, HDR images. And if I did that one by one, wow, that would have taken a long time. I'll go ahead and press play so you can preview this. And so, yeah, pretty cool. I didn't go for a surreal look. I went for something that looks semi-natural and, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. So the first thing you need to do is open up uh, Photomatix Pro and click on load bracketed photos. The reason we're gonna do that is because we need to create a preset that works uh, for our final batched output, right? So you're gonna go ahead and navigate to the folder where all your images or exposures are set. You're gonna grab a set. So in this particular situation, I have a three bracketed uh, set. What that means is I have a regular exposed image and under and an overexposed image. And I'm gonna take these three photos and merge them into one. So if you had a five bracket set, you'd be grabbing five of your images, etc. But I only have three, so I'll click on load. It will basically show that I'm loading those three images there. I'm not gonna check this button box here and I'm gonna click on okay. I'm gonna get my pre-processing options. And inside my pre-processing options, it gives me some choices. Do I wanna align my source images? Well, because this was all taken on, taken on a tripod, I don't need to do any alignment, so I'm gonna uncheck that box. By the way, the more boxes that are checks, checked here is going to increase the amount of processing time for each image, right? So do I need to remove any ghosts? In my particular setup, there, was no, there weren't any moving people that I need to remove. And by checking this box, then you're gonna have to do a little bit of work yourself. You can have it set to automatically, but by setting it uh, with a selective deghosting tool, that's probably your best bet. Next, do I wanna reduce noise? Maybe one of the things you notice is I'm using JPEGs. You will get better quality or better final output if you shot it in RAW. And reduced noise, I believe, works way better in RAW than it does in JPEG. But if you check this box, you have a couple options. However, you're probably only going to want to reduce noise in your underexposed images. So I can have that checked even though I shot in JPEG. It's going to increase my processing time as well as reducing chromatic aberrations. But I'm going to leave these two checked and click on pre-process. It's going to take those three different images. It's going to remove noise from the underexposed one and it's going to merge it into one HDR photo. Now when it comes up, and it's taking its sweet time. When it comes up, I'm gonna have a list of pre presets. It's gonna show me a histogram, and I'm gonna start building my look. Whatever look I have, so let me go ahead and move things around a little bit. Oh, okay. So more or less, if I drag this here, more or less this should be mostly fitting in the screen capture, except for the histogram, which is here. So this gives us an idea how our, our image is looking. And by default, it comes up with this surreal look, which is not something I was going for. You're gonna choose, there's three different options here, how you wanna process. You wanna process via tone mapping or exposure fusion. And under tone, tone mapping, you have two different methods. Are you trying to do detail enhancement or tone compressing? Now, if you're looking for something that's surreal like this, then you're gonna be using the detail enhancer. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more realistic, you'll switch over to the tone compressor. For example, over here in the presets, if I scroll down, I think that there's one called deep. And deep, if we click on it, gives us a basically a pretty realistic look while still showing us some of the details within the highlights and the shadows. When we click on this particular preset, we can further fine tune it over here, right? It shows that the preset is deep, but as soon as I change something, so for example, if I increase the white point, then we'll notice that it switches to custom and we're basically gonna fine tune this to our liking. Because the video I showed you basically used um, tone, compressor, I'm going to actually switch on over to Detail Enhancer and we're going to play with that a little bit. One of the things that I want to do is maybe start off with a different preset that maybe looks a little bit less crazy or you know what, instead of doing that, let's just start modifying this. I'll switch my strength maybe to about 30. And the funny thing is if I go ahead and enter a number here and press 
uh, enter on my keyboard, it's going to process the photo. I don't know why they did that. They should make it so that once you're inside one of these and you enter a number and you press enter, it just commits the change. But instead, it will it will commit to process the whole photo and then you won't be able to make any further changes. So I don't know. Let's put the strength to about 30. We'll leave the color saturation to 60. As far as the luminosity is concerned, we'll leave that here. This is not a tutorial on how to use every single uh, slider here. This is more about batch processing processing but we got to come up with something we're gonna like so maybe we can switch these uh, lighting adjustments here if we have lighting effects turned on if we want to change some more of these options maybe if we want to smooth out the highlights a little bit if we want to change our white or black point let's bump up our black point a little bit um, as far as the gam is concerned maybe touch that up a little bit do we want to change the temperature eh, I don't know but let's look in the advanced options here. Do we have anything we want to change? Maybe click on 360 image. Eh, maybe not. It basically darkens this area over here. So we'll leave that undone. Um, let me see if I can go ahead and uh, bring this up so that you can see within the capture. Over here under preset, let's say that this is the look that we're going for. Um, I'm not saying that I like this look exactly, but we'll click on preset right here. And then down here, you'll notice that there's a save preset button. When I click on that, it's going to come up here. It's going to save it to the default Photomatix Pro presets folder. I can call this whatever I want. Let's call it um, Photomatix Tutorial. When I click on save, it basically has saved this preset so I can use it in the batch processing feature. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And after I do, I'll close out of the image that it processed and come down here to uh, batch bracketed photos. So when I click on this, it's gonna give me another dialog box. Inside this dialog box, I have several options. On the top, you need to have this merge into 32-bit HDR file checked in order to use either detail enhancer or tone compressor. Now, if you remember, in, when we were in load bracketed photos and we had our HDR image up, we were working with the detail enhancer. I wasn't working with the tone compressor. However, you can output a separate file for both of these if you create two different presets. The more files that you output, the longer that this is going to take. So obviously if I output a tone compressed file as well as a detail enhancer, it's probably gonna double my time. Once I have this tone map with detail enhancer checked, I can go into the settings right here and then I'm gonna select my preset. I'll notice that Phonomatic Tutorial, the name of the preset that I saved is listed here. When I select that, the checkbox for save is there. If I wanna fine tune this a little bit, I can fine tune this preset from this point. I'll go ahead and click on okay, because let's say I wanna use the settings that I used from uh, that preset that I saved, right? If we wanna make any changes right here to this HDR file, we can, but because we're not planning to keep it, or at least I'm not gonna to plan to keep it, I'm gonna come down here and click on remove 32-bit HDR file after tone mapping. If I leave this uh, unchecked, basically what will happen is it's going to create an HDR file as well as a final uh, process file. And so what type of process file is going to be set here as the save as? So if I wanna save this as a TIFF or a JPEG, Obviously, I can pick to my liking. Now, a 16-bit TIFF is going to be 100 megabytes or over with the files that I'm working with. Obviously, an 8-bit TIFF is going to be significantly smaller, and a JPEG is going to be even smaller because we can also change the JPEG quality slider here. If you're looking for the best uh, or the greatest resolution of your output, you'll leave it in TIFF, but remember, size can be an issue. You can select your customized location or you can create it under your source folder. I like to create a folder within my source folder called processed and that's where I'm going to put it. I'll select this folder. You'll notice that it has it here located in the destination dialog. If we were going to save the HDR file, we have an option um, to either set it as an HDR file or an EXR file. Um, over here is where we're gonna select our source folder. It's already selected, but basically you'd navigate to the source folder with all of your images. You'll go ahead and set that folder. It will show you a list of all the potential files. Now I'm using JPEG, but of course you could be using RAW as well. And you can select individual files, but typically if you're batch processing, you're gonna select a folder, right? 
And if you had a larger amount of brackets, so for me, like I said, this is a three bracketed shot. If I had a five bracketed shot, I'd go ahead and change this here, right? If I needed to align my images, I can check here, but I do not, right? I can change my naming and output options here by clicking, and but I'm gonna leave it by its default. When I click on OK and select Run right here, you'll notice it starts loading the images and it starts processing them. And as we're waiting right here, the reason I only had nine photos is I wanted to show you how long this takes. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna leave the tutorial running for the full amount of time, but just to finish one image, you'll notice I'm talking and it still hasn't finished that, that image. It's still working and it just finished the first image and started moving on to the second image. If I click on the image over here within my finder, press the space bar to load it up, I'm gonna go ahead and resize it so it fits in the screen capture area. And we'll notice this particular TIFF is 107.5 megabytes. So obviously, if you're working with TIFF 16-bit, you're gonna use up quite a bit of space depending on how many final photos you're gonna use. It's working on the third HDR image right now, and when it's finished, I'll basically have three images within my process folder. I'll bring this up real quick to show you, and uh, I think it just finished. If we click on over here, it says the results are here. This You can click on that link to open the folder. I already have the folder open. This detail enhancer right here is the preset that was used to be applied to each of those HDR files, and then it got rid of those files because I had this button checked within this dialog. I can now close this window and start working on something else, or I can close Photomatix Pro. Guys, if you have any questions about this tutorial, please leave them in the comments. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, I'm out.